What's up, Timber? Hey, man. How you doing? I'm all right. Yeah, all right. Good. So you're all jazzed up for this election? Oh, I just can't wait for it to be over. Oh, man. Which may be well, I sp- now, obviously, but... I spent two and a half weeks with... The only thing on TV was, like, Fox, CNN, and News Nation. Oh, that's horrible. Jesus Christ, man. I don't know. I, I, if all I they talk about America, on Fox is Harris, and all they talk about on CNN is Trump. Yeah. And the Nazis. That's what I, that's what I noticed. Fox uh, or CNN talk about the Nazi party and Trump all day long. It's, yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. I would like, I'd like, I'd be watching Fox for five minutes and be like, oh man, this is too intense. And then I go over to CNN and be like, oh man, this is too intense. So I just yeah. end up, yeah, and then after, war, after man. half an hour, I'm like, I can't, I just can't keep listening to this shit. Yeah. It's, it's hard. That's for damn sure. It's, it's difficult. I like this. So then you go and watch, you know, something else and there's ads. Every like five everywhere. minutes, everywhere, horrible, horrible ads, horrible ads. Yeah, Here's a new it. drug, and I can't wait for it to be over. Brain cancer, lung cancer, dizziness, puking, fatigue, or you just might lose your mind. But apart from that, it's a great drug. Yeah, I gotta. Uh, I can't wait for it to be over. I don't know how people watch TV in the states. It's crazy. I can't. I watch Netflix, man. Yeah, Netflix. You know what I enjoyed was uh, the Mayor of Kingstown. You watching that? No, where were you? You were like on an island, right? I was sipping on coconuts in Antigua. And what, you got uh, engaged or something? We got engaged. Congratulations. Got engaged. That's how you made an honest woman of that American girl. <laughs> right. Well, she's she's almost fully Irish now, so just have to burn that U.S. passport. You, you could take the girl out of America, but, you know. <laughs> It'd be she, hard to get I know, the, she, I know she got a little Irish in her now. <laughs> well, the children are definitely Irish, so they have U.S. passports as well. Oh, there you go. As long as, they gotta, to... as long as they don't got to pay U.S. taxes. Oh God, no! That's that's why they're keeping their Irish passports, man. They yeah. pay twelve and a half percent corporate. Yeah. We're going to Branson next summer, actually. To uh... yeah, yeah, Americana at its finest. Yeah, we're going to a rodeo. There you go. So, yeah, you should come. I could definitely see you at a rodeo. <laughs> I've been to rodeos, man. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, in Hawaii. They do them on, oh, yeah. on the big island that's a Hawaii, di- at the Parker Ranch. That's a slightly different type of a rodeo, I'd say. No, same thing. Just oh, yeah. Hawaiian guys instead of, you know, instead of nice. redneck. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. And then we're going to get up to some lake somewhere nearby after after the rodeo. Yeah, it's all It could be a shotgun wedding yet, you know? Too late for that. Why, she's going to be pregnant again? <laughs> maybe when are you maybe. getting married uh we haven't really talked about that yet okay 2026 maybe okay you push it time. out there you got time to yeah. change your mind yeah she's got so, she's um, time to, to knock some sense into herself <laughs> um yeah so it's real Brand sleepy food. time out here in these markets man it's what it's real sleepy time it was a, it was well, a nice was hour weird. maybe and then it's just now it's Everyone's gone back to hibernation. hibernation mode. Bullshit to be over, you know? I know. I know. It's kind of like waiting for the Fed to cut. Just like, can we do it already? Yeah. Um, do you think, did, well, I just on that actually, just to make turn the conversation dull and boring. Do you think, do you think uh, the Fed have kind of boxed themselves into a bit of a shitty corner? I guess. I mean, they got to, they kind of got to cut rates, right? Yeah, but the market is like, as soon as the market cottons on to what the Fed are going to do next, they just like price it in like within, I don't know, five sessions. It's a job, right? It's a job of the market. That's what it's supposed to do, no? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, who's it going to be? Kamala La 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 or Donnie? I don't, I don't have a single fucking clue. I, I think, quite frankly, the whole thing's a fucking embarrassment. That's what I think. <laughs> The fact that it's one or the other, that in this entire country you can't come up with one person that, that more deserving of being a president than these two people is just, to me, it's embarrassing. That's really what I think. I also don't think it matters that much, but, you know, let's see. Mm. Well, I don't think any, there's any countries out there fielding, like, stellar candidates for elections. Probably, like, probably not. Probably not. In the UK? I mean... I saw a great... Uh, little snippet from uh our man obama this weekend i think it was kind of old but he was talking about like 
he was basically trying to give a motivational speech, like never think that you're not good enough to do something, you know, because you are. He goes, you know, I've sat at tables with the most powerful and people in the world, and like I saw that half yeah. of them were fucking dipshits. <laughs> saw that. Yeah, he was like from Harvard to then what the Senate to then right. the G seven leaders. And he's the whole like, thing. he's like, fucking. He goes, I'm not saying there aren't some smart people at Harvard. There are, but there's also some serious fucking dipshits. <laughs> Yeah, thing with with global leaders, you know, like they're, yeah, you know. I like the way he's like, you just sit there for five or ten minutes, and you'll quickly figure out. Hold on a second, these people are idiots. Yeah, or some of them are idiots. Yeah, yeah. So there you have it. Yeah, well, the guys in here was reminding me that actually you were. I was doing a rundown on the market before the open there, and one of the guys was saying that you you were seeing that the or yeah, you're saying the sellers are in control here, or potentially in control. I don't know that the sellers are in control, but I think that I am. I'm. I'm pretty bearish here, which doesn't look like it's right at this point in the day. I mean, blues are up four points, but I am uh, for the first time in quite a while pretty bearish, which I hate being because it's just just a horrible trade over time. I, I, I'd be much more happy if I were selling into the eyes. No, I'd be happier if uh, my stuff was telling me to be bullish. I can be much more comfortable about being bullish than I can being bearish, but. Unfortunately, I don't control what this shit says. It just says what it says. And right now, uh, I'm, I'm I'm pretty bearish. Most bearish I've been in years. Right. Which, yeah, which doesn't mean that it fucking ends up working. But uh, it's just a risk-reward thing. And the risk-reward right now, to me, is is to the downside. So well, let, let's see if it works. Got a little bit of a short position on, and uh, I'll get stopped out if it you know goes through last week's highs, and it'll be over. But um let's see it's just like any other fucking trade really but yeah for the first time in a while i'm, I'm pretty bearish to stop so for the first time in a while so are, are you on equities shorts yes you and warren see warren sold 25 percent of his apple stock yeah gone back to cash it makes guess. sense man the, the look the trade is buy low sell high and shit's high so i guess man it's high relative to where it's been. The question is, is it high or low relative to where it's going, right? That's what we need to know. I can still make Yeah, but then, but then what's your time frame? Yeah, I don't know until my stuff sort of flips around. I don't know how long that takes or sometimes right. it takes a few weeks and sometimes it takes a few months. You know, it's up. It's not up to me. It's up to how everybody reacts, you know, but... what Did you use a news it, failure to get into this? Yeah, I thought Wednesday last week was a bad day. Oh, yeah. GDP? Yep. Yeah, thought that was a I bad. Talked about that in, yeah, I talked about that in the VWAP report. It was, it was, it really wasn't a big miss, but like Jesus, the market fell down. Like no, but know, it was two... to me, it was Goldilocksy type of number, which is what everyone's looking for, and the market, the market failed on it. So I'm short against that high, and uh, if it takes out that high, I will take my fucking loss and go home and wait for the next idea. Wait for the next which wave. Happens all the fucking time, unfortunately, but. It's just a risk reward thing, man. That's all it is. As well, I that's, as I yeah. judge risk reward anyway. Yeah, I think the Russell's hit pretty decent resistance point here on the highs on day. Yeah. I, I mean I I'd definitely be with you there, yeah. Sure. Sorry. Sorry. Uh yeah, I like it. It's such a hard trade. It's such a bad trade over time that you know such a bad trade over time being short the stock market. But whatever. Take my shot and I'll take my lumps if they come. Yeah, it's a bad trade if you're like holding shorts over like year on year, right? You know, we've been we've been in a bull market for like feels like five 100, years, one hundred and fifty years. Well, <laughs> yeah, really, yeah, the whole time, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's upward drift. I think the stock market is really the only market that has proven over time that has upward drift. Yeah, so sure. certainly not a phenomenal play. All right, one thing I read there, I thought you you find it interesting. Or have certainly have something to say about it. I read that from Apollo Academy. I follow these guys. There's a guy called Kirsten or Kirsten Block or something. Anyway, they, they do good short research articles. He said he found that ninety percent of fund managers underperform the index. Active equity fund managers. Yeah, and I just read that and I was like, this. how how in the hell do these people still have a job? Marketing, brother. It's all yeah. sales game. See, what I find that interesting because, like, you, 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 you're obviously like, you know, being uh, what well, you're a unicorn within this space, but 
you've also been in those type of rooms and conversations and talked to probably a lot of these guys. But like, how, how, are, how do they, how does that, how do they get away with that? If someone goes, oh, I can do like 14% compound on the SMP or say like, I don't know, eight or 12 compound on the SMP on the index, or you're telling me that you're losing money like over the same period. Like, how do they do the allocation? Do, do you watch my don't fade trade videos? Yeah, because you're going against what all these guys are doing. Sure. No, but I did yeah, a thing I where them. they, um, I, I did a thing where we measure, well, we took a few portfolios at the beginning of this year. One of them was like, you know, the picks from the Barron's fund managers and all that shit. Oh, yeah. Um, and we measure it over the course of the year to see how they're doing. Um, you can check it out. I just did it like two weeks ago where I updated where they're at year to date. And it's not like I did this after the fact. We did this on the 1st of January. Like, okay, here's what we're going to look at. These are the portfolios that we are going to track over the course of the year. Oh, okay. And uh, it's pretty fucking unbelievable, quite frankly. It's it's worse than I would have expected. <laughs> um, let me see if I can find it here. But uh... I'll have a look at your YouTube for it. But yeah, check in, in short summary, like what what what's the big takeaway from from this? Like, I just don't know how they get the allocation. Well, it's because of how the business fucking works. How does the business work? Uh, from an institutional standpoint, so here you are. You're on, uh, you know, a union, right? You're a union rep, and you yeah. guys have a pension fund. Wait, here I'm going to give it to you. The Barons. So they recommended 25 stocks in Barron's in the beginning of the year. These are all the Barron's, the best fund managers Barron's can find, right? We took 24 of them because the 25th one was international. So we wanted to measure it against the S&P. So the their, 24 stocks, their 24 stocks equally weighted this year were up when I did this video a couple weeks ago, 5% on the year. The S&P up 22.5% on the year. <laughs> so if you had equally weighted yeah. long S&P and short their entire portfolio. You'd be right? up 20%. 17 percent completely Def. completely dollar market neutral that Jeez beats Christ. any long short equity fund i can tell you right now you well know, effectively they're, equity they're fund, if they run them 50 50 long short there's no way they're up 17 percent. and i kept saying like you could do that you'd run a long short equity fund you short the barons you get long s p's dollar equally weighted you're up 17 percent with hardly a, a single fucking drawdown on the year um jesus and it costs you nothing to do that. Nothing. You don't yeah. have to have any analysts. No you don't have to have any Bloomberg. You don't have to have anything. It costs you nothing. Just go online, read the Barron's article in January, put the portfolio on, and that, that, that's your entire cost basis. That's what that Someone one Someone should make that a fund. Someone should make that I'm an sure, ETF. I think, I think I'm going to. I just might have to do that just for hell of it. But, you know, the way it works well, is you're on a pension fund, you know, whatever, and there's a committee, and no one on that committee wants to take responsibility. So they hire a consultant to tell them where they're supposed to allocate these assets and, and who is supposed to manage it for them. And those consultants have relationships with these, with these managers. And by relationships, I mean, you know. Kickbacks. Yes. And that's how it's yeah. done. I mean, clearly, all you have to do to tell if you're a consultant, but you're not. How are you earning your consultant fees? Okay, go 60-40, you know, 60% <laughs> put, you know, put in an index fund, a low-cost index fund. 40% put in whatever, TLT, you know, we're done. No one's going to pay you to tell them that. Plus, you don't get paid on the back end either. So that's how they get their elegance. That's what the whole business is based around. I witnessed it because I worked for an institutional fixed income manager. At it's fees. Time. But that's how yeah. it works, man. You know, that, that, that's how it works. That's how they get their allocations. Clearly, if anybody was doing it based on merit, then nobody would have money. Yeah, it's just fees. I remember I was studying for QFA exams here and covering the pensions module. And like a lot of these pensions advisors are just creaming it in on like they're getting kickbacks for referring everyone and anyone into a mortgage. And then they get a kickback in perpetuity, i.e. every single year that that policy is in effect. These consultants are getting a payout and it's 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 not insignificant. So it oh. seems to be like a gravy train of a of a of a gig, basically. It's what it is, man. It's a gravy train of a gig. Like a, a friend of mine who's who's an engineer, he he wanted to put like I don't know a couple of hundred grand into something. I talked to him about it, and I was like, you can you can do these trades yourself, S and P trackers, bond trackers, whatever ETF. And he's like, yeah, I think I want to go with this institutional house in Ireland. I won't name their names, but they are well known in Ireland. It begins with D. And uh, 
he sent me over the prospectus to have a quick one over on it and i was like uh yeah the fees here man if you want to exit your fees are 40 percent right like your fees are 40 percent. just just let that sink in for a while and he's like and his response was yeah fair enough and he and he did it and i was like what do you, I, I just couldn't believe it man he got in and out and he made a small amount but i don't know how did he get out if it's 40 percent they get out no he he got in for like i don't know two years or something uh made a little bit of money and then they took their cut on the on the on the gains right oh got an extreme close-up there of your face <laughs> oh sorry i'm just trying to read fucking something on my computer and i, I can't see so i have to like squint and get real close got to get those big specs, man. Yeah, I hear you. I'm going to get a lot of fucking things. Like out of <laughs> SP shorts would be the, probably the best thing I got to get, but whatever. Um, what was I going to say to you? can't remember. Oh, yeah, did you get the kitchen done? Nah, not yet. I had to spend the fucking... I spent an inordinate amount of money last month for a guy like me who doesn't like to spend any money. I spent an, an order... In order it, it... I don't know the word. No amount of money. Inordinate? Yeah, I, I spent in, in way fucking too much money last month. Well, so she, and, she's know, just gonna have to wait on the kitchen. Well, all all that all those cigars, you know, high priced cigars. It's not what it was. Strippers, like. drugs, an no, expensive no. lifestyle. Being a wizard, it was all fucking home shit. I had to fucking get a new couch because my couch was all fucked up. I get a new. I have a well in my house because uh, of where we live and. I fucking got fucked up. I had to get a whole new water system. Oh, no. A shitload of money, and then I had to fucking buy a new car because my daughter fucking stole my fucking car from me. I haven't had a car for a month. So I had to break down and buy she a new car. She stole your car. She basically stole my car, yeah. So she's she buying it. I mean, I'm selling, I'm selling it to her, but I'm selling it to her. She's buying it. She's paying me every month, but I, have, I haven't had a car for a month, so I had to break down and buy a car, so fucking... And I don't, like, take loans and shit, so I had to fucking put up a lot of money for a car. And I give to this fucking charity every year at this time. I had to write them a fucking big check. I, I wrote, I probably wrote a fucking hundred-something thousand dollars in fucking checks last month. That's more than I usually spend in a fucking year, dude. Jeez, man. I mean, vacations, not including vacations. Wow. So, yeah, there's no kitchen. I thought I was having a bad month. Yeah, there's no fucking kitchen. <laughs> I'll, I'll put her up a kitchen next year, maybe. See how we do next year and at the end of next year. The end of the year is where all my stuff comes because then I know what money I have. But maybe in the next year, I'll put her up in the kitchen. I don't know. Well, let's see how these shorts go. I think if yeah. Kamala comes in, I think you're golden. Yeah, whatever. I'm not trade. This has, my trade has nothing to do with my thought on the outcome of the election. That's for sure. I think the election's just noise. I have to get through it without getting stopped first. Yeah. I thought about not even putting it on until after the election, but. I'm just not going to let the election affect my stuff anyway. My shit tells me to get short, I get short. That's it. You know, if uh, election and be damned. Oh, gold. gold looks like it's going to have a nice deep pullback over the next couple of days. Platinum looks like shit. I hate platinum. Platinum is too wild for me, man. Mm. I have no edge in platinum. Just wild shit. Too much risk. Way too much risk on that thing. So like 25 bucks. It's like sick. It's pretty wild. Yeah. Oh, well, at least I ain't short the fucking Russell. I had to make a choice between shorting the S and P and shorting the Russell. And I shorted the S and P, which is up three fucking points, and the Russell's up twenty something. So at least I got lucky on there. Got a nice long out of the Russell lows on day monthly. Was the monthly level on that uh, low? Oh no, it was that low just after, just on the open. Bought that, took it off twenty two thirty ones. Actually, just before that, done. Yeah, I had a nice reaction to GDP, but it looks of it, but it's bouncing a lot harder than the booze, the thing. The Russells, yeah, well, I mean, look at rates, right? They love to trade the Russell off of rates, so look at the bond market today. I did I put it in the, I know this because you've obviously read the VWAP report twice already, but in the, I put out that, yeah, they're, they're, they're underwater. 40, almost 45% of Russell companies are uh, making a loss at the moment, reporting losses on these higher interest rates. Yeah. Just a question of when is that really going to kick in to the index price? Well, Russell's such a badly, it's such a bad index to me. It's a horribly put together index to me. Think yeah, about it's it. still, it's if still, a company is successful, it gets too big and it has to go out of the Russell. 
So basically, they kick out all the successful companies and they keep all the shit companies. They're basically cutting Why? their winners. That whole index cuts its winners and rides its losers. That's how that index is developed. That's good to me. That's yeah. good. How is that a good thing? You know, it trades really well. It trades really nicely. I hadn't traded it in like five years, and then just been back trading it this year a little bit from like maybe four months ago. Nice, really, pretty good edge in it. Yeah, we like, we like it for intraday. I don't know about big swing and positions but that's nice all right well just thought i'd check in with you and see how enthusiastic you are about this uh, election cycle and it seems to be you're about as enthusiastic as i am it's the total I just want it over man i'm so sick of... and everybody that's where everybody is everybody's so sick of it every goddamn like you said every tv show doesn't matter oh. what you be watching freaking cartoons which i do <laughs> quite a bit and uh <laughs> It doesn't matter. Oh, here she is. Here he is. Here she is. Here he is. Here she is. Here he is. He's telling us how she's fucking this and that, and she's telling us how she's the, how he's this and that, and everywhere you go, uh, surrounded by you know. Well, I was gonna say I'm surrounded by Trump haters, but it's not true because I'm also surrounded by Trump lovers, and, and I gotta hear it from them every fucking day why it's so important that I get out and vote for their freaking person, and it's it's the future of our country, and da 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 da. And I'm just that's the future I'm, I'm, of democracy, Jason. The future right, of the universe. Like, dude, the relies future of our on country this. to me has a lot more to do with the fact that our fucking military budget's going through the roof, our interest payments are going through the roof. And I don't hear either one of these people talking about doing anything about any of that. Okay. That's the future of the country to me. So you know what? That's exactly why they're there. That's exactly why they're the candidate. Because they're not going to say, hey, we're going to slash the military spending budget by 50% or even 10%. You know, who do you think's funding these guys? Yeah, no, of course. I you know, what, a great, I had a great what, Frank Zappa line. Great Frank Zappa line. You like Frank Zappa? You probably don't like Frank Zappa. I've heard of Frank Zappa. He said, um, let me get this right. I should put this in my report this week because I thought it was so fucking good. Politics is the entertainment division of the military industrial complex. Frank yep, Zappa. I believe that. Politics is the entertainment division of the military industrial complex. Yeah. So yeah, clearly they're not going to cut defense spending and, and they're not going to cut interest expense either because no one's going to be able to do that you're going to be the guy that get up gets up there and says okay we're going to stop giving money to everybody vote for me well like yeah. zelensky i think two or three months in it's half down here he's not in at the moment we have a ukrainian member in our team but uh like two or three months in zelensky had on the table in front of him a deal to sit down with putin and uh hash it out and next thing you know boris johnson flies in and says negative ghostwriter you are not allowed to talk to that man. And Zelensky goes, okay, and now we're however many hundreds of thousands of Russians and Ukrainians dead. Yeah, needlessly. They don't, they don't care. You know? he, could have, he could have easily done it, but you know what? He wasn't allowed to because Papa Biden and the weapons manufacturers who were making these huge sales via, you know, via the funding, you know, 500 billion for Ukraine, that doesn't go offshore. It stays in the US and it goes into the, you know, general dynamic base systems, Raytheon goes into their wallet and then they give over the web to ship the web. I mean, but look, if you have these conversations with a lot of people, they just go, Hey, that guy's a, that guy's a lunatic. He's a conspiracy lunatic. Yeah, I know. But you know, if you can't see that, then you're a fucking lunatic. <laughs> That's how I see it. Yeah. If you can't see that's who's running the fuck. I mean, it's, it's hardly a conspiracy theory to say that, you know, defense fucking contracts is from the fucking world. Man. <laughs> you know? They run the world, fortunately. So, whatever. It, it is It is what it is. I'm taking a trip, quite frankly, to uh, the Virgin Islands on Christmas. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking about making the move. Yeah? Yeah. BVI? Not BVI, AVI. What's AVI? American Virgin Islands. Oh, American Virgin Islands. <laughs> you won't get hit with an exit tax, no? No, they have like things there where if you invest a certain amount of money, then you qualify for... Like basically no taxes. So you could be an American citizen still, and uh, and basically pay no taxes. So is that like Aruba, uh... Saint Croix? Saint oh yeah, Cox. a friend of mine actually is from Saint Croix. He lives in Texas. Yeah, Saint well, Croix, Saint John's, I think is is what it is, and uh, one other one. I forget what the hell it's called. I'll find out when I get there. Nice man. Yeah, we'll see. Well, um... Saint Thomas, Saint Thomas, Saint Croix, Saint John. Gonna have to come out and visit you, man. 
Are you going to make the move? Are you going to do it? Let's see. I'm going to go, out there, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out there this Christmas with my wife. We're going to check it out. It's nothing I can do this year, but it's something I could probably do in two years. Nice. Um, so we're going to go check it out and see what the deal is. And, uh, you know, I would personally, uh, I'd go somewhere else, man, and just give up my U.S. citizenship. But I feel like uh, with my wife and her family, you know, they're very close. You know, she's going to be wanting to come back to see them and all that shit. So spend time here and all that. So, yeah. You don't want to be too far in a plane away. Yeah, it's either that or Puerto Rico does the same thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know a few traders. Well, I know of a few traders who went to Puerto Rico for tax reasons. Nice. Well, I'll look forward to coming and visiting you with just a pair of shorts in my trunk. Yeah, maybe you can uh, go have your uh, your wedding out there in the Virgin Islands, man. <clears throat> She's a virgin That's anyway, that. your wife, right? That's right. Just two kids were the Immaculate Conception. <laughs> the Immaculate Children. Yeah, you guys love that immaculate conception shit. The whole thing, man. That's how we do it in Ireland. The, the virgin mother, man. Miraculous. <laughs> just had that miraculous baby. Well, here's to short on the spoos um, along the American Virgin Islands. And uh, short gold, I think. I think there's probably a better chance of me moving to the American Virgin Islands in the next two years than there is a chance of me making money short spoos. <laughs> Well, everyone can make money. It just depends on your timeline. I hear you, but it just feels like, I think that, it, like I say, higher probability of me moving to the Virgin Islands, I mean, making money short spoofs, but whatever. They're just, yeah, I mean, I, I, personally, I'd be quite scared of the volatility that could come through on, on the election, like over tomorrow night. Like you could, I don't know. I don't know. I've only yeah, traded two of these events. It's going to be an annoying week, it's for, it seems for certain, but whatever. Just say, just hopefully I don't get stopped and, uh, and it works. But like I say, I get stopped, I get stopped. Fuck it. You get stopped, you get stopped, that's all. Wouldn't be Nothing the first more. time. Takeaways from this are uh, we're going to start uh, an anti Barron's correlation index fund. Is that right? Long spoos, uh, short Barron's. It's kind of a home run. <laughs> Based out of Ireland. You know that the Israelis are selling all their war bonds out of the Bank of Ireland? And there was like a massive... War bonds, what? The Israelis are selling their war bonds through the Bank of Ireland because they can't passport into Europe through the UK anymore. So the Irish Bank, Irish Central Bank, is now selling the Israeli bonds for them. And this wow, came out last last week bond. while I was away. I don't know how much the Irish hates fucking the Irish hate is Israel. Uh, well, we prefer Palestine a bit more, yeah. But um, anyway, this big public uproar about it. Um, this well, last week and over the weekend because it's only kind of come to light. You know, I um, went to this wedding uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, I saw that. I saw you wearing a shirt and a jacket and all. Baby, all was, you know? like, where'd you see that? Uh, on Megan's Instagram. Uh, I see. Um, and the guy whose daughter was getting married, he's a good friend of mine, is a Irish American guy, and he's a bond broker. He's been a bond broker for a very long time, and has done a lot of business in Ireland for a very long time. And All so right. the guys that he has been friends with for a long time over there, a couple of them were there. And the one guy, I forgot his name, but he's like a fucking big shot at the Bank of Ireland. He used to, like, whatever, manage some fixed income money there. And that's why they're friends. But he's yeah. moved up the, uh, the ranks over the years, I guess. And I, I guess he's, like, some kind of super fucking senior guy over there. He runs their right? asset liability management fucking business or something. You know, he basically runs their whole balance sheet, it sounded like. At Bank of Ireland? Yeah. Nice. He doesn't live in Geneva, does he? He he lives in Ireland still. No, he lives in Ireland. All right. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of serious business goes through Ireland because of the tax regime and economy is very stable. And you know, so quite a bit of business goes through. All right. Yeah, he was a nice guy. His wife was super nice too. They were nice people. Well, I'll, I'll chalk him. I'll chalk him up for uh, the dog and pony show when I'm raising the fund. Yeah, if I could ever, I could. I, I obviously could get his name. I could call my friend and ask him what the fucking guy's name was. Pretty simple. At Bank of Ireland, we want 10 mil. We're yeah. going to YOLO the oil market. Yeah. How's my uh, boy doing? Is he still hanging out with you or what? Yeah, yeah, he's doing great. Yeah, yeah. yeah? Uh, I don't know if we'll name any names on here, but uh, we're recording this. Uh, but yeah, he's doing fantastic. So uh, yeah, it was a lot of a lot of negative stuff to uh, work through at the start. But uh, we got yeah. that off the decks pretty quickly and uh, showed him a new edge. And... Um, He's he's flying, loving it. 
Yeah, so I'm, I'm scheduled to talk to him twice this week. Actually, we have calls lined up. So that's good to yeah, hear. He's doing really well. He's a good dude, man. I like that guy. So yeah. it's good to hear that he's doing well. Yeah, I you, you should guys, give him a shout. I figured you guys would get along. Give him a shout and have a chat with him. He'd love to hear from you. Yeah, I'll send him. I'm pretty sure he's still on my Discord. Uh, I think yeah, he's he's definitely in your room. I think. All right, we'll wrap it up there, and uh, listen, you stay safe. All right, so congratulations, on panel the people, whole, uh, on the whole wedding thing. Engagement thing. Here's Sharpie my, talking uh, to you before give anything happens. Regards, give my regards to your future bride. I will do. Say hello to Megan for me as well. And, uh, oh, she's loving that book recommendation I gave her. You should read that book. Man. She I book. would read it if she ever fucking got through it. It's taken, you know, she reads it before she goes to sleep. She reads it for about 10, 15 minutes a night. That book's like 700 fucking pages or something. It's a big book. All right. It's taken her a long time. I mean, she's been reading it ever since we got back from Ireland. She's maybe like a third of the way through. Oh, yeah. But she does love it. I'll say that. She tells everybody to read it and everything like that. Yeah, it's a brilliant book. The funny thing is she was telling this one dude to read it that we were hanging out with in Chicago. Who's he? He's half Indian. What's the name of the, of the book? Shantaram. Yeah, so his last name is Ram. He's half Indian. That's an Indian last name. And right. he was telling me his aunt's name is Janta. Oh, okay. He's like, oh. Shantaram. He's like, I'll be able to remember the name of that book, no problem. <laughs> I got another trading related book for you called The Price of Time. I need you to by a guy a called How Not to Short Fucking S and P's Ever. <laughs> that's the only trading book I need, man. Yeah, never, that's the book you're ever, never gonna read. Ever short the S and P's. All right. And the book you're never gonna read is Long Term Short Profitability in the S and P. It does not work. But The Price of Time by Edward Chancellor, check it out. <laughs> He did a podcast. Actually, I'll send you a link to the chat he had with Howard Marks. You heard of Howard Marks? Of course. Yeah, so Howard Marks did an interview with him, and uh, it was interesting. So I got the book. Yeah, Howard Marks is a smart, obviously a smart guy. Yeah. All righty. All right, man. Be good. Talk soon. Let me know. Yeah. All right. Take you, care. Getting, uh, you know, shekels and shamrocks going. Well, I suppose that we could talk about it here. But uh, So we finally agreed that it's called Wait and Fade. Okay. And uh, we're going to be doing a podcast together where Jason will be. Why don't you ask these? What, you, what are you going to be doing? Why don't you ask these people who are listening what we should name it? See, I personally think that it should have some reference to the fact that he's in Ireland and I'm a Jib, just for a little hum- humor. And so I proposed shekels and shamrocks, which maybe is not the best thing. Um, but I, cert- I, I personally think there should be some reference to across the pond, some reference to money, which was the shekels thing. Some reference to Ireland, which was the Shamrocks thing. And the Shekels thing, of course, was a reference to the Jew thing, too. I personally thought it, it captured it all. Your proposal is what? Uh, wait and fade. Yeah, see, yeah, it's a little boring, but put it out That's there. not very people. rock and roll. Anybody who happens to be listening to this, if there is such a person, let us yeah. know. You don't have to let us know which one you think is better if you don't want. Let us know what you think would be a good one. I mean, I ran mine through Chad GPT, and that was what they came up with. And I came to about 20. <laughs> that was the one that, that I picked. But let us know. Shackles and Shamrock. I'm Irish, man. They're going to roll me out of the country if I have anything to do with Shackles. Truth. Truth. But, you know, then you'll get publicity. <laughs> All publicity is good publicity, right? <laughs> and, and you'll come live on the in the Virgin Islands, man. <laughs> in your guest house. Jekylls and Shamrock. Uh, look, I, fine. All right, we'll put it out there. Jekylls and Shamrock. I, I really don't care either way. It's your podcast, man. Wait and fade. It, it's your world. I'm just living in it. Hammer and tongs. I don't mind. Whatever. Let's get some ideas going, coming back from people who do listen to this. So I want to, I'll publish this video before the weekend, and you can drop it into your room as well and see what they think. What about Dugan and Dickhead? <laughs> yeah. Deegan, I could be the Deegan. Deegan, Dugan, and Deegan. Dugan and Deegan. What the hell's a Deegan? Isn't that like a word for like a, a fucked up individual? What a Deegan? What That's am what I thinking like... of? I'm thinking of maybe another word. First of all, I look it up. It says the name Deegan is an Irish surname and a boy's name that means black haired. Oh, Deegan is crypto slang. It's a short form of the word degenerate. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Dugan and Deegan <laughs> for degenerate. <laughs> You want to do that one, Dugan and Deegan? I freaking definitely fit that description, degenerate. If you love it, I'm not opposed to it at all. The Dugan and the Deegan. 
a degenerate which just describes traders who engage in high risk high reward strategies without much regard for potential losses yeah i don't really fit that that's actually the opposite of me but except when i but uh CDs, well no it's a broad term dugan and deegan d-e-e-e -E how about dugan and the deegan the deegan and dugan i love it it's but, right. okay hold on i gotta say straight it's dugan not not dugan it's d-u-g-g -G. doug and well, you dug a hole what your name you mean duggan yeah 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 all right so duggan and the deegan the deegan make it so for degenerate a we'll derogatory in work the group term anyway. for a sports better I, mean, I don't like the cryptocurrency term for it unfortunately but whatever work on it let me know we'll put it at the groups see what they think all right, all right. Cool. talk to you later right. man be good right, enjoy